Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, I, I've done a lot of things in my life, but four years ago, I committed myself to augmented reality. Um, independent research. Um, I'm going to be citing some things from the open AR cloud, and if you're serious about augmented reality, and I'm sure you are, you should be, oh, you should turn on your microphone. <laughs> What, hello? hello? Beat me up? What? Oh, clicker, okay. Something to goof up, okay. Um, so the Open Augmented Reality Cloud, how did I get associated with them? Again, I'm completely independent, and I was researching this stuff since 2016 when the Oculus came out, and I thought, man, I'm missing something because I see Amazon has an AR system, Microsoft has an AR system, what is going to happen when things start to really take off? There are so many systems. And I'll come back to the results of that later, but I found, oh, well, I found a podcast, The AR Show, and they interviewed the four people responsible for founding the AR Cloud. And when I heard that podcast, I said, wow, this is exactly what I've been worried about or concerned about. And we started to communicate, and that's how that started. So Novabe is the only company that I have a business relationship with and they made Bubico. And Bubico is a 3D model <clears throat> that we've been using for research. So this has been self-funded. OK. So I've been speaking around the world. Um, coming up <clears throat> to Reno in Italy. This is me. This is a 360 video. I use it just because it's in Shenzhen, and it's kind of a nice image. The important thing is 2016 is when I started to do research. I've done a lot of stuff, <clears throat> a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. OK, this is um, how I became involved with spatial computing. I was creative director for a company in Singapore, $3.2 million startup. And things were going great until the guy in charge died of a heart attack on the day of the launch. Please take care of your health. Um, I was teaching game making. As a creative director, I was sitting by model makers and the C++ guys, but I'm not at all technical. OK, this is a mystery image, which I'll come back to. OK, <clears throat> autonomous vehicles. California, 62 companies. 678 are licensed with the Department of Motor Vehicles. And there are other companies testing. <clears throat> I'm from Toledo, Ohio. <clears throat> and I was giving talks in Detroit. And I know that there are more places doing testing that they don't have to report to the government. So anyway, autonomous vehicles, big growth industry. This is impressive. 300 million to 500 million lines of code. That's a lot. I'm not a technical guy, but that's a lot. They're moving data centers. So now, what are the uses of an autonomous vehicle with AR? Required by the vehicle, safety and routing, maintenance, mapping, vehicle to vehicle, content offered by companies. That's going to be a huge market. It's starting to develop now. How many of you know the phrase, the 25th hour? 25th hour means <clears throat> when you're in a car, when you're in a vehicle and you don't have to drive, what are you going to do with that time? Use your phone, or it could become a moving classroom, <clears throat> a moving meeting room. Content chosen by individual passengers and content shared by passengers. If everyone's going to a business meeting or a convention, they can meet in the car and discuss and use augmented reality. <clears throat> so it's evolving into a platform, not just vehicles, Emergency vehicles, drones, traffic control, very important. Pedestrians. So all these autonomous vehicles are connecting to what? What are they connecting to in terms of augmented reality? This was one of the questions that I had. I was confused by this. Now, one of the things which has evolved are called HD maps, extremely accurate maps. That's a great thing. When you're in a car, you want to make sure you know, two inches can be a big deal. Can GPS handle that? I don't think so. Can it handle it reliably? I don't think so. Can GPS handle augmented reality? No. So, geopose, and that's how they're spelling it. This is a new term. I am not a representative of these companies. I'm in contact with them. They're not companies, they're volunteer groups trying to create a standard. But let's first look at what is geopose in terms of autonomous vehicles. OK, geopose of vehicles and or pedestrians can be used for safety. You can basically read that and understand the value of geopose, especially autonomous vehicles and driving systems. 
delivery robots, <clears throat> poor visibility, overall traffic patterns. Okay, this is historic in that it is a photo, maybe the first photo in the United States of something that's like Geopose. This is from a Norwegian uh, service, I guess it is, maybe it's a government service called, um, I, I got the next slide. This is a close-up of the data on the top left, and I, I just did a close-up because it's interesting, perhaps. Added altitude, accuracy, I can't tell you more, but th there it is, border go. I can't tell you more because all the information is in Norwegian. Um, and this was shared by Jean-Eric Vigne, who's the managing director of OARC. And this is a prototype, I, I, I don't know if that's the correct word, but it's similar to how geopose will work. Okay, um, the yellow marker would be a geopose. Now again, I'm, I'm coming into this as an artist, as a director, as a creative guy. I don't know what information could be tagged on those yellow marks, but I imagine those eventually could be tagged with safety information, weather information, whatever. Advertising. Another image, and I'm not clear. <clears throat> um, this has happened very quickly. I just got these, this video. These are stills from a video. I just got this like a week ago, and I'm still trying to figure out what's what, and Jan and Eric isn't, he's busy, so he's not replying all the time uh, in, in depth. But the, all I can tell you is that the green is the terrain. I don't know what the magenta line is, and I don't know what those dots are. But again, this is, this is historic stuff. Okay, um, this is going back to the, the question I had, the confusion I have. You know, some companies are going to want their car to have information on how it's running, on service, on maintenance. Um, this is a city's, I think this is in uh, the Netherlands, showing how their version of the digital twin or how the city might reflect augmented reality. Um, there are a number of global spatial cloud organizations concerned with safety, privacy, technical things. And this is, <clears throat> I'll come back to this later, but that's the augmented reality clouds version of what we're looking at in the future. Okay, if you want to take a photo of these upcoming slides, these are their definitions. I'm reluctant to repeat them because I don't want to say something incorrect technically. But I recommend you, if you're interested in this, go to the OGC website. Okay, um, they're sending me the better resolution, so I apologize, this is a screen capture. But you can see the physical world, the static reality layer, and then the real-time reality layer. And I'm not an expert, but somewhere in there, edge computing will be a big deal. I'm just coming into this again as a producer who wants to know how to make uh, good <coughs> AR products, experiences, AR experiences. Okay, so geo refers to, it's not GPS. And pose, six degrees of freedom. I'll let you read that while I do something that I've always wanted to do, which is fly an airplane at MIT, paper airplane at MIT. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I don't know if you got that. But anyway, I fly the paper airplane because that's how you explain the, the other three degrees. Geo, GPS is good for you know, the latitude, the X, Y, Z, but the other uh, considerations are the, um, the latitude, longitude, ascending, rolling, or yaw. I, I'm glad I kind of know that, but it's not so important to me as a producer. If you're in an autonomous vehicle, that's extremely important. Okay, real objects and digital objects can have geopose. Phones, statues, you can, you can read that. It's interesting, when I was asking people, I've asked probably about 20 people, and no one knew what geopose was. I'm sure some of you do. How many people knew about geopose before today, before this talk? One, two. So this is really important. I'm sharing this. This is the whole point of my talk. Um, as URLs are to the internet, Geopose will be as important to AR. Okay, there are high value cases, there, there are many. The consortium created the SWIG, as they call it, on January 7th. <clears throat> so this is very new information. I really suggest that you people who are much more technical than I am and who can appreciate the importance of this 
contact them. But the key word, interoperable. Amazon, you know, Magic Leap, all these companies have their own system, but are they going to talk to each other? Interoperability is something we need to discuss. OK, this is the limit of my technical information. Um, coordinate reference systems, I don't really know what they are. Right now, the default is WGS84. And in the future, that will be considered, or you know, with 5G, that will be overworked. Or the phrase was uh, woefully inadequate. But yeah, contact them. OK, this is, <laughs> this is me doing what I can do. Bubico Food Tour is our little character that we created for experimentation. Um, and this is a road in Michigan. And I put her in front of the car, and then we drove the car through. And you can see she stayed there. Now, I, you know, when you're trying to create a project or a movie, I'm reluctant to, say, reluctant to say movie, but when you're trying to create an augmented reality experience, you have to know what's going to happen to the model. Is it going to be stable? Is it going to eat up battery power? What about multiple users? <clears throat> so that's Bubico. Um, Vincent Trustor and I are working on a project to create a public installation, an AR installation, on the difference between GPS and GeoPose. So, it's in the formative stages, and we'd like a child's uh, drawing. I don't know if we'd choose that one, but something very simple so that you know, it's a fun way to teach people that GPS and GeoPose are very different. And we'll probably put that in Paris near the AR Arc de Trump. OK, um, this is Bubico. <clears throat> Thanks to last year's ARIA, which I spoke at, I met Julia Villabot from Nova B, and her company helped us make this. So what you need to know is <clears throat> about Bubico, Unity, Facebook, Spark, 8th Wall, ARKit, Motion Capture, and Transient VR. Transient VR music app is incredible. <clears throat> We're getting experience with uh, mod 3D models in the AR space. <clears throat> OK. Um, in the beginning, in 2016, I was using this to explain augmented reality. And I'd say, yeah, tabletop cinema. Bubico will be able to walk around and talk, and depending on the Internet of Things and other things. So some people thought we were crazy. But you can see here, that was in a newspaper. Uh, I presented in Paris, blah, blah, blah. OK, entertainment, ice cubes in oceans. This is a new topic. Ice cubes are micro activities, Snapchat, 19 crimes, most tall lens projects. Not so concerned about GPS. Now, oceans, oceans of points. GPS, Proto Geopose, Pokemon Go, Scape. I was talking to somebody earlier about Scape. That was the company that's doing some really amazing stuff with uh, location based AR. Super World, they're trying to sell AR real estate, but Geopose is something all these sorts of activities have to think about. Well, I mean, all of the ocean type activities. <clears throat> okay, 19 Crimes, that was my go to example when I'm trying to explain AR. This, I don't know if it'd be an ocean or an um, ice cube, but this is, I think, from the Tour de France. If you really want to see AR hitting the ground in a great way, look at the Tour de France, because they've got money. I think NTT is behind it, and they're doing some really amazing stuff with 3D mapping and just all kinds of AI and amazing stuff. <clears throat> OK. Nissan has the ideas of digital avatars and in your car. So when you think of the Bubico thing, how are they going to do that? How are you going to have a character moving in the car with you? Digital humans. All right. You could have a digital driving passenger. If you're driving from here to Rochester and you don't like your real passenger, maybe you could have a di digital passenger. I'm saying that because thanks to this, I think I have a ride to Rochester tonight. OK, um, biggest issue with autonomous vehicles is trust. The safety is OK. The designs are OK. But how do you get people's trust? This is in Detroit. This is an autonomous vehicle by the May Company. It's actually a super duper golf cart. But there's no steering wheel. You know, There's a person in there for safety, but they don't do anything. So how do we get people's trust to do that? So this is a working title, B Roadway. Autonomous vehicles, real and digital actors, music lights, and the dynamic streets of the world all interacting to create great entertainment and wonderful memories. Now, 
this is uh, Shenzhen. When they had their 40th year anniversary, they wrapped the city with images. Dancing, is that for me to get off? Or? OK, anyway, blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 stop by my table and say hi. Well, how many people know what the gallium is? Ooh, wow. OK, I've got a book. It's on sale today. It's an e-book. Thank you from Bubiko, Stephen, and Sayuri, my partner who's now in Japan. And Citadel's, Bubiko is kind of an ambassador for this uh, completely bio-friendly community. And that's me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you to John. Thank you to John and Khalil. Uh,